Welcome back to Talk and Shop. We got a great text here today. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Mark chapter 1, again, <laughs> we're still here. Uh, but uh, the point here really is to move through the baptism of our Lord into his temptation in the wilderness. As traditionally, the first Sunday in Advent, mm -hmm. what we do, or Advent, sorry, Lent, that we do, <laughs> and all over the place. Uh, but you get that. Uh, Mark's very brief with it, uh, but we'll talk through all that, uh, kind of, you know, pick at this text a bit and, and kind of flesh it out. I think we'll come with some good uh, insights and conversations about it. We always welcome your insights as well. So take a moment, like, and subscribe, and let's get after it. In every way, yet I'm still welcome in the arms of the King. All right, welcome back to Talking Shop. We are looking at Mark chapter one, still Mark chapter one, uh, verses nine through fifteen. We get some verses we haven't had yet, yet. which is the I, yeah. which is the point. I think. Uh, so let's let's kind of speed through. Not that we should skip anything, but the the baptism of our Lord. We've done this uh, several times from this text. Uh, so. Um, uh, uh, in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was what? Baptized by John in the Jordan River. Yeah, maybe we should do this. I mean, there is some unique stuff in Mark's gospel in yeah. the baptism. It's kind of unique to him compared to the other baptismal uh, stories. What's unique about Mark? Now you're all like, well, I don't like have any ways. idea. Yeah, right? you, well, I know on the temptation, the next part. Yeah, no, no, we'll get to that in a sec, but... Um, oh, you're testing my brain. He, he comes out to be <laughs> baptized, uh, and uh, the the language is just unique, right? He when he came up immediately, he saw the heavens. Oh, okay. So right. he's the one doing. You hadn't scene. gotten there yet. That's well, why I was. That's why I was, just, okay. I was trying right. to. I was kind of. I was trying to speed through it. <sighs> right? Well, so, you stopped. Uh, we're not very good at that. Nope. But um, so uh, yeah. So what does he he sees? What does he see? The heavens torn open. Yeah. And that's unique, yeah. this, this tearing or rending of the that's heavens. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You'd think you'd have that in Matthew because that's the curtain in the temple being torn. Yeah. No, in, in Matthew, it's the whole interaction between him and John and the idea of righteousness, of fulfilling yeah. righteousness. Yeah, yeah, the conversation. Yeah. yeah. So, and, yeah. And, yeah, that he doesn't, yeah. like, I shouldn't even do this, right, yeah. that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but here, uh, you do get this beautiful image. Well, it, I mean, again, I don't think you're probably going to, maybe you, maybe you pull this in. But if you didn't do it when you did the baptism of our Lord, uh, where you did this very text, um, is there anything there that you'd maybe pull out or kind of like tease out of that, of the, the tearing of the heavens mm -hmm. as he comes in, mm -hmm. the, the rending of it? Well, I mean, obviously we're getting into, I don't remember whether, I'm sure it is in, in Mark, um, but, uh, you know, since we're in Lent and getting into there, that's going to conclude with Good Friday. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. In which you're going to have the rending of the curtain. So you're going to have, you have judgment. Uh, you could preach judgment at the beginning of it. That is judgment. This is my son mm -hmm. uh, in whom I am well pleased. And then the, the judgment at the end of Jesus, of, of God making that judgment, tearing the curtain and yeah. uh, and declaring with his son, it is finished, which yeah. actually aren't well, words in Mark. Nice but, yep. yeah. yeah. Beginning okay. of it. Okay. So. Yeah, and I'm trying to help you think ahead yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and I think so. I think, and I think like this, um, this him being baptized. This is like this kind of bold proclamation of, of of this arrival of yeah. this one in their midst. Like, um, like this separation between heaven and earth now yeah. is sort of solved in an essence in this one, That's good. this person, yeah. yep. right? The and the tearing open the heavens and the descending of. The Holy Spirit is kind of symbolic of that, this yeah. uniting of these things. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. um, so the Holy Spirit, what's it look like? A dove. A dove. Right. Well, yeah. I would say it's funny when you read it. So, you know, we always have that image uh, uh, of a dove. Um, it doesn't say it looks like a dove. It says it descends like a dove. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Swoops down. Yeah, yeah, it was gentle. Yeah, yeah. Lights with his little feathery wings. Yeah. Didn't pull over. Right. Anyway. Right, right. Yeah. I thought it was Isn't a, a rushing, diving feature. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't a rushing wind blowing through? Right. So, right. yeah. 
Uh, and the voice from heaven. You are my son who I love. With you I am well pleased. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, you can, you can you go back to our conversations before on the baptism of our Lord. I uh, got a lot there. But um, this, you know, you can kind of say this action of him standing in the water, uh, uh, this water of repentance, this fulfillment yeah. of these things, the tearing over the heavens, all this, mm -hmm. this, this pleases the Father, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, this sending of his Son, the Son goes forth to do what he's been mm -hmm. called to do, assigned to do. Uh, this is the pleasure of the Father, right? And, yeah. Uh, so I think you, you do get that. Um, a lot of times the baptism story gets used as this is Israel reduced to one yeah. kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Here's the good Son, the faithful yeah. Son. Right. right, that pleases the Father. Yeah. Right. And he's about to prove it. He's going out in the water. Absolutely right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where mm -hmm. they failed. Mm -hmm. We'll see yeah. what happens next. Nobody in here knows. So uh, you could also do a lot, I think, uh, moving on through that now with the Spirit, because the Spirit has, has alighted upon him, uh, anointed him. Uh, this, is, this is the Christ after all. He has received the Spirit. And the Spirit does what? It says, well, hey, just relax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, now. right? Um, no, drives him out into the desert, right? Yeah, yeah, the Spirit prepares him for ministry, you might actually argue, mm -hmm. because if you... I, I'm going to do a Lenten series on the number 40, uh, which is huge in, in Scripture. Sure. And uh, the the time of preparation is a is a 40-day thing. Okay. Um, or a 40-year thing in the case of Israel. <laughs> right. um, and, uh, and so... Knowing what is ahead, knowing this path that's going to lead to the cross, the Spirit is driving him into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. uh, we always add that to be tempted, uh, being tempted by Satan, but actually in Mark's, that's not until the next verse. Um, it's simply that he's driving him into the wilderness because it's in the wilderness, that's the other side you could do a Lenten series on, it's in the wilderness where you meet God. Yeah. And where you, you learn to rely where on God. you learn to rely on God. Uh, yeah. It, so the wilderness isn't always uh, just like I think growing up I just saw it as simply punishment yeah like yeah. oh they're Israel will disobey now they're in the wilderness yeah. well, no there's actually this is a faithful place to be too. Yeah. yeah I like that that preparation idea. well mm -hmm. everyone always forgets when they get to this point where was John he was the voice in the wilderness mm -hmm, he's sure. the voice that everyone from the cities came out into the wilderness to see to gather to and to come and repent. If you will, turning people back to God. Yeah. Where was that voice? In the wilderness. Yeah. So yeah, yeah good point, good, good point. Um, so yeah, the, the spirit though drives him, right? The spirit mm -hmm. uh, uh, moves him out into Ek the ballowed. wilderness. Yeah, casts him out. Yeah. Is, same thing, ekbalo, that's the same word uh, often for when Jesus, uh, we, usually, we joke around when we translate, we always say he chucks out yeah, demons. Chucking throws demons. Throws them out of people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he ekbalos. And this can yeah. be a little controversial because you, you remember the story uh, maybe a couple months ago, a couple of news cycles where Pope Francis got on that uh, God tempts no one, you know. Why mm, do we have mm -hmm. the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. Lead us not into temptation. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what God is doing. God the Holy Spirit is doing here, leading yeah. Jesus out to temptation. Yeah. I think uh, it's in I think it's in Matthew's gospel that actually says to be tempted. Yeah. yeah. Here there here there's a separation yeah. there, but yeah. yeah, in Mark's gospel. But uh yeah. So he's in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan. Satan. By Satan. Right. Um so, yeah. By so, the so there he is, 40 days, you get your 40 day thing there, Matt, for yep. your series for sure. Um, and and this is what's going on. Now, in Mark's gospel, you don't get any of the details. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except yeah. the next line. That's uh, one little thing to which the Which is, yeah, which is different. Which is unique to yeah. Mark, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's being tempted by Satan, we know that. Uh, so you get kind of this adversarial uh, yeah, that's a good uh, word. image there. Um, mm -hmm. And then. The next line is great, right? Yeah. And he was with wild beasts. Yeah, the wild animals mm -hmm. and the angels were ministering to him. Mm -hmm. If you can do it, this would be a fun one to preach on. You could like really mine this. Because I mean, what does that mean? It's weird. It's it sounds weird. You're just reading along. It sounds like a throwaway kind of line, yeah. but in Mark's gospel, there's no yeah, throwaway line. Right, no. So what is he, what, what sort of things 
might come to mind when you hear something like well, that. Well, he said um, Jesus here is Israel reduced to one. Okay. And that's good for the Jew and the Jewish audience. But when you want to talk about the Gentiles as well, who are also intended audience for Mark's gospel, you can take that back to Adam, where six day, uh, God's, or excuse me, he entrusted Adam to name all the animals. So there's man with the animals. So we can see this not only going back in Jewish history, but for everybody, all the way back to Adam's yeah. the whole human race. Yeah. That's the Christ that's being tempted for everyone. So yeah. you're connecting that to Adam who was... Tempted and fell. With the, but also with the animals. Yeah, also, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think you get that you get that language of um, you know the, the the fulfillment of God's promises is, is this uh, restoration of of our order with mm. the animals. Oh, like sure. The, the yeah. children will play uh, over the animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, the, uh, yeah. Lion lays down with the sheep. Right. That uh -huh. that there's no. You know, there's no more fear mm -hmm. of yeah. of the attack of the animal and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So there's this um, there's this healing of all of creation yeah. in that mm -hmm. regard. Mm -hmm. And I've often thought that here, like going back, I like we going back to Adam. It's like he's he's with the animals. It, there's like this. It's a yeah. It sounds like a throwaway thing, but there's something powerful here that yeah. he's mm -hmm. he creation. is just abiding with them, yeah. right? Without um, uh, fear or animosity or whatever. Um, you know, it's. Is it um, one of C.S. Lewis's in the Space Trilogy? Is it uh, yeah. uh, Paralandria, mm -hmm. where it's that image of this perfect world, right? Yeah. That's like C.S. Lewis does a great job of what does it look like to be with the animals? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they just like care for each other. Yeah. There's Hrasa. no. I remember yeah. the Hrasa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no like fear, there's no death even yeah. amongst them. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're all no. With G N A U. Isn't that the word Lewis uses? Because we're all. No, um, humans were created by God, and so are the animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. part of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, what you guys we were all talking about earlier too was that you know Jesus being driven out into the wilderness, and then the animals, and you know how we always have people this day and age like, oh, I'm religious, uh, I'm spiritual, but not religious, <laughs> yeah. and oh, I go find God in the wilderness and stuff like that. Right. And so <laughs> people go out and they find God in the wilderness. They see all this nice imagery of God's creation and stuff like that. But then again, like we were talking about. But the animals are living on instinct, right? Mm -hmm. The animals are coming to feed or do whatever. There's that threat and fear of, uh, of you know, uh, of, of animals. And there go, that's where our sin comes out. And that's when sure. we get tempted, uh, tempted for our survival, for our, you know, uh, self-need and uh, hmm. self-sacrifice. And so now our experience in the wilderness is what Jesus is experiencing in the sense that he's going out into the wilderness where we usually say this is where we go to find God, but now we're being tempted too because yeah. there's, yeah. and, you know, if we go back to what um, sin is, right? Sin is just the desires of the flesh, the instinct of the flesh. Most animals lived on instinct and uh, of the flesh. We, in the same sense, we do the same thing while we're in the wilderness when we're trying huh. to survive and whatnot. So, at what point do we get to that perfect harmonious yeah, yeah. language? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. And then you get the next little bit, and the angels were ministering to him. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what do you make of that. Well, it kind of brings us back to our imagery <laughs> from last week with our transfiguration, right? Where sure. uh, you know um, Moses and Elijah came to minister to him. And not only that, but the, what put me in and this put me in mind of was Elijah in the cave when he was complaining, and then an angel comes and brings him food, and then he's a lot, lot better after lunch. This is too hard for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going back to the forty, by the way, he spends forty days on his oh, trek to Horeb. There you go, another one. So yeah, yeah. that's. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, the care and the provision of God, um, uh, for sure, mm -hmm. and maybe some imagery of of what this gospel that He is proclaiming holds. This is yeah. a, the, this is um, portends to something more glorious than what we can imagine. Well, and I I wonder if uh, if you want to make that connection, if you want to play with that text, if you couldn't go to the Elijah text for Lent. Obviously, this is a, a season of preparation. It's a season sure. of repentance. Yeah. If you couldn't go to the angel's words to uh, to uh, um, Elijah, this is going to be too hard for you. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And good and, and play with that in this yeah. Oh, yeah. in this forty days as as yeah, we I love, I love as we text. come before our cro yeah. the cross of our Lord. Always, this yeah. track is going to be too hard that, for us. I usually use that line when uh, talking with people who 
I mean, life just beat them to heck, and they get to that point, and and they've had well-meaning Christians say to them, "God won't give you more than yeah. you can handle." Right. right? right. And I always you point them to that text <laughs> where where Elijah's like, "That's it. I'm done. Kill me." You know, and uh, I can't do it. And God doesn't say, "I didn't give you more." No, the angel yeah. shows up and says. The, I think it's literally in the Hebrew. It's like the journey's too big for you. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it's like yeah. this. You can't do this. You're not gonna be able. And to then, do it. so what's to do? Here, eat this, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And then carries him all the way to Horeb. Yeah, you know, like uh, or, mm-hmm. or ensures that he gets there. And the other thing that happens here, because we were just talking about going from the nation Israel to all of creation. Well, the creative order gets even bigger. It includes angels and archangels. Yeah, mm. that's know? true. Mm-hmm. So there like they that are. Too. So maybe you're everyone getting, you're getting, and Christ yeah. is in the center of all that. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Like you're maybe you're getting yeah the extreme. You got the animal kingdom. You got the uh, angelic, angelic realm, mm-hmm. and they're all they're all centered here on Christ, yes. mm-hmm. who is taking on Satan in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So so uh, uh, wow. So then he comes. Uh, uh, out of the wilderness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, mm-hmm. Now, uh, and it, that's introduced, um, again, no wasted words. After John was arrested or delivered over, Jesus came to God. So John has served his purpose uh, in, in this gospel in a very abrupt way. Um, and uh, he is, Jesus is proclaiming the good news of God, yeah. the gospel mm-hmm. of God. Um, and what is the content of that proclamation as far as, what he gives us. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Yeah. Although the good news isn't quite specified yet. I'm right. It will unfold as yeah. we go forward in Mark's gospel. I, I almost just did, you know, you read the text, but I almost went, 40 days and Nineveh will be overturned. <laughs> oh, wait, no, no, that's not what he said. That's, that's right. not what he said. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, later on, when um, in, in the next section of Mark, um, Jesus says, Performing miracles, everyone's coming at sundown. They're all pressing to get in there, yeah. bringing the demon possessed and everything. Um, and Jesus says, "No, um, let's just go to the next town and preach because that is why I, I came, came out." out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And he says, "Came out," and I'm like, "Came out from where?" So mm. if you isolate that, you don't see where, but you tie in the passage that we're talking about today. Yeah. Came, came out, out from the wilderness. wilderness, like Israel was to do. Hmm. And there's that connection there. That's very good. That's very good. Yeah. And yeah. of course, Lenten theme. Then you could also play with this because the the good news is repent yeah. and believe. Oh, there you go. The kingdom of God is at hand. Honest so in this repentance. in this season of repentance, you could uh, you could play with that line too. Mm-hmm. If you didn't play with it a couple weeks ago, yep. uh, when we right. had that in and the text, and that's all long gospel, gospel first encapsulated into one little short statement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Repent and believe. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. It's it's beautiful. And that you know the whenever. Whenever these like texts like this, or when John says it, because you get John giving that same sermon essentially, um, uh, and then Jesus picks it up. Um, you know, it's it's great. Like when you're preaching it, to be like, this is the same the same message. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not preaching you something different. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still repent, believe the good news. Like, yeah, this is still which I believe was also. <laughs> Isaiah, Jeremiah, yeah. <laughs> Hosea. Good point. Know, good point. Well, and Luther too. You know the whole yeah. Christian yeah. Uh-huh. life. Yeah. Uh-huh. Daily repentance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so great stuff there. Um, some fun things to maybe uh, talk about that maybe your hearers haven't quite thought of before. And whenever you can kind of mine it and um, you know kind of matrix it with greater parts of scripture, mm-hmm. I think it, it's. Uh, it makes for a good sermon, certainly because it's engaging, uh, but it, it, you know, it helps just with like the biblical literacy yeah. of people yes. yeah. to see some of these connections, um, and and that's never going to go wrong, right? That's, right? Those are good things, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, definitely law gospel. I mean, it's clear there. Um, so uh, let us know your thoughts on this text, which you which you might preach uh, if you got something unique there. Uh, share that with the group. People are starting to give more responses, which is good. Helps everybody. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And God bless your preaching.